The issue is not the election. The election is a battle in a war. It is not something unto itself. The result of this election in itself is a matter of indifference. It's a question of how the battle is won and lost, which is important. But there's another issue here. There's also an issue of World War III. And World War III is between the British Empire, better known as the Anglo-Dutch liberal banking financial system on the one side, and the principal nations of Eurasia, Russia, China, India, and other nations are the targets of intended warfare by the British Empire, which is already turning Europe into a mere colony of the British Empire through the program of the Lisbon Treaty. If the Lisbon Treaty were adopted, and is being pushed for adoption now, there would not be a single nation on the continent of Europe, west of Belarus and Russia, which had any sovereignty whatsoever. The British Empire would control the entirety of that region of Europe, from Portugal to the borders of Belarus and Russia, as a puppet of the Anglo-Dutch liberal financial interests. It is those interests represented in the United States for a long time have taken over control of the U.S. dollar, control of the United States. Now they're moving in for the kill. The same cartel that put Mussolini into power in Italy, the same cartel that put Hitler into power in Germany. And we're now at the brink of something like a Hitler power taking over the United States. If they grab the United States, then they will grab all of Europe out of the Lisbon Treaty. If they control the United States and the parts of Europe under the Lisbon Treaty, then you will have an actual fighting war emerging on this planet. You will have dictatorship. You will have mass starvation. The elimination of whole sections of the population of, of parts of the world through starvation. And that's part of the British program. It's the food war. That's the situation. We're not dealing with an election. We're dealing with whether there is in the United States in the top layers of society, the moral fitness to survive. And so far, the vote is in the leadership of the Democratic Party and the Republican Party, neither is morally fit to survive. They're as unmorally fit to survive as the people who backed Mussolini and backed Hitler back in the 1920s and the 1930s. And if we allow this to happen, we will get the same kind of treatment that the victims of Mussolini, Hitler, and so forth suffered. That's where we stand. We have to win this war against that evil empire. Now, for a number of months now, there has been a worldwide food crisis caused by many things, by, by the financial policies, uh, various kind of management deals, by the WTO, which ought to be eliminated, by the promotion of biofuels, which is destroying food supplies. This biofuel program is a gigantic swindle for which there is no possible justification. None. The justification comes out of the World Wildlife Fund of Prince Philip.
in Zimbabwe, for example, what's the crime? You have an African population in Zimbabwe, which was one of the biggest fighters against the British Empire. They're not allowed to develop their own territory because London, by various mechanisms, prevents them from doing so. And London uses the farms it allows to, to prosper in former Rhodesia to feed the populations of Britain. So you have non-African farmers running farms, producing food in Zimbabwe for the edification and fattening of Brits. But the rest of the population is inhibited in any attempt to develop. What they've done is they've taken industries, manufacturing industries in particular, agriculture in particular, and countries which were good agricultural producers or good manufacturing producers have been stripped of those industries that industries have been taken to populations where the lower 80 percent of the population is illiterate. So you have colonies of manufacturing in countries in Asia, Africa and so forth, South America, where the people, the 80 percent of the population, does not participate in the economy. You have areas which used to be food producing areas which no longer produce food. Because what you're having is a world dictatorship under the name of globalization, better called the New Tower of Babel, in which the cultures are being destroyed as the United States is being destroyed, as Germany is being destroyed, as Italy is being destroyed, as France is being destroyed, and the attempt to make war on China, India, and Russia. And that's the intent of the British Empire. Nothing less than the destruction and breakup of China, the breakup of Russia, the breakup of India. That is the policy of the British Empire now. This is what the game is. And if this game is not stopped, I can tell you there'll be no planet. But then come back to the food question. If you want to get the American people and other people of other nations up on their hind legs, acting like free people rather than battered slaves. Tell them their food for next tomorrow morning is not there. That activates popular resistance more than anything else. We are now in such a situation. For many parts of the world, the lack of food is an immediate reality. There is a growing explosion throughout much of the world over this food shortage issue. The rate of food shortage is increasing because the stocking from various food stores, annual stores, has been already delivered and there's not enough. So as the fact of the empty warehouses and equivalent forms of, of supplies, as these things go down without food, the food crisis is going to accelerate. And you're going to have not only other parts of the world, but also American citizens who are now faced with the threat of death by food shortages. So therefore, the issue here is not the election result. The issue is not the president. Obama is not competent to be a president. It's none of the makings of competence. They don't want Obama. They just want to use him to destroy Hillary Clinton. That's all. Once they destroy Hillary Clinton, they'll get rid of Obama. That's their intention. And their intention is to bring in a fascist regime in the United States, a presidency which will be, in effect, a fascist regime, which will cooperate with the British and bring the United States into alliance with the United Kingdom, or the, the Anglo-Dutch liberals. Not all Brits are for this, by the way. But, and with, with a Europe, a Western and Central Europe, taken over by this same imperial power. An imperial power whose intention is to go to war against Russia, China, India, and other countries using nuclear power. That's the intention. We're now in a point where a revolutionary movement, or the makings of it, is building up around the food issue. And therefore, those who triumph yesterday are not going to continue to triumph for long. The result is either we win and restore the kind of government we require in various nations and among nations, or this world is going to go into hell because the crisis won't quit. The people will die of hunger. They will die in increasing numbers. They will kill for food. The structure of society will be destroyed in the fight over food, which is not there. Therefore, either we win this fight against this evil, or there won't be anything to fight.